Chapter 2, Section 1. We're discussing relations and functions. A relation is a pairing of input and output values. The domain is the set of all input values. The range is the set of all output values. A function is a relation in which each input value is paired with exactly one output value. A relation can be re represented in many ways, and the first way we're going to look at is set notation. The first member in this relation is 5, negative 2. The next member is negative 3, negative 2. The third member is 3, 3. And the fourth member is negative 1, negative 1. This relation is a finite relation because it has a countable number of members, 4. We could also put this same relation in a mapping diagram. And to do that, we need areas for our input and output values. The input values are listed first in the ordered pairs. So our input values are 5, negative 3, 3, and negative 1. So we'll put those in the area labeled input in our mapping diagram. Output are listed second, so negative 2, negative 2, 3, and negative 1. Because negative 2 repeats, I don't have to repeat it in my mapping diagram. I can list it once. Now I do the pairing. 5 is paired to negative 2, so I'll use an arrow to indicate that. Negative 3 is also paired to negative 2. 3 is paired to 3, and negative 1 is paired to negative 1. Okay, we want to identify the domain and range for this relation, so we'll use set notation to do that. Our domain values <coughs> are those input values 5, negative 3, 3, and negative 1. In set notation, we write them in numerical order, so I'll list negative 3, negative 1, 3, and 5. And then the range has three members, negative 2, 3, and negative 1. So I'll list those also. There are output values. Is the relation a function? <clears throat> Does it pass the definition or satisfy the definition for a function? Does every input value pair exactly with one output value? And it does. No input value repeats. 5 is only paired to negative 2 and no other value. Negative 3 is paired to negative 2 and no other value. 3 is paired to 3, and negative 1 is paired to negative 1. So is the relation a function? Yes. It passes the definition of a function, or satisfies the definition of a function. Okay, a couple other ways that we can represent a relation is in table form or as a graph. So let's list a table, an input-output table, which can be vertical or horizontal. This one happens to be vertical, and our first pairing in this relation is negative 3 is paired to negative 1, negative 1 is paired to 1, 1 is paired to 1, 1 is paired to 3, and 2 is paired to negative 1. Okay, we can put this relation in graph form. We'll have some equally spaced tick marks and labels on our graph. We need two axes because we have two numbers that we're graphing. So we need more than just one number line. We need two. We have negative values to the left 
and negative values down. Okay, let's graph negative 3, negative 1 in the third quadrant. Let's graph negative 1, 1 in the second quadrant. 1, 1 in the first quadrant. 1, 3 is also in the first quadrant. And 2, negative 1 would be in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so this is our graph. We would want to decide if this relation <coughs> is a function. So looking at the table, we see that two input values repeat. That tells us that it's not a function because 1 is paired to 1 and 1 is also paired to 3. An input value is paired to two different output values. So it's not a function. It doesn't satisfy the definition of a function. We can see that in our graph, too, using a vertical line test. A vertical line test says a relation is a function if no vertical line intersects the graph at more than one point. So if we pass a vertical line through our graph, we see that it intersects this relation in two points at once. So it, it also tells us that it's not a function. It doesn't pass a vertical line test. Some terms that we need to uh, know in relationship to our graph are, is coordinate plane. The graph is a coordinate plane. It has four quadrants. This is the first quadrant. Second quadrant we find moving to the moving counterclockwise. Third quadrant, we usually label them with Roman numerals, but we don't have to. And the fourth quadrant is here. It's the axes, the x-axis and the y-axis, that divide the coordinate plane up into four quadrants. The x-axis is horizontal and the y-axis is vertical. The origin is where those axes intersect and the ordered pair that names the origin is 0, 0. Ordered pairs name all of these points on our, our graph. This one happens to be 2, negative 1. The x-coordinate comes first, the y-coordinate comes second. This point is 1, 1. The fifth way that we can represent a relation is in equation form. And we do that when we have an infinite number of members in our relation. We want a graph an equation on the coordinate plane. And because this relation <coughs> is given in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b form, we could use that form to quickly graph this equation, this relation. Okay, now the y-intercept in this equation is negative 1, so I would graph a point on the y-axis at negative 1. And then from there I can find more points using that slope. Remember, m represents slope, and the slope is also negative 1. Only I want a rise and a run, so I'll write it as negative 1 over 1, my rise over my run. So from this y-intercept I can go down one unit and to the right one unit to find another point negative 1 over positive 1, a rise of negative 1, so I'll go down, and a run of positive 1, so I'll go to the right. And then I can draw this relation, this line, through those points. Oopsie. It's supposed to be a straight line. So I guess you have to imagine. And then we want to decide if this relation is a function. Why is this relation a function? it passes a vertical line test. If we pass a vertical line through this graph, through this coordinate plane, it intersects the line in only one point at a time. Any slanted line 
is going to be a function. So we can just say that it passes a vertical line test. Okay, a solution of the function is an ordered pair x, y, and we can name a couple here. Uh, this one happens to be 1, 2, 3, negative 4. And um, this one on the y-axis is 0, negative 1. x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. x is the input y is the output. If we were going to make a table of values for this equation, we would, dis we would assign values to x, anything. We could let x be anything. And then we would substitute those values into our equation for x and solve for y. So y is going to depend upon what we put in for x. If the graph of the function is a line, the function is a linear function. And a function can be written in function notation where y equals f of x. So if we take our equation and we replace y with f of x, we've put that function in function form. We've put that equation in function form. And in function form, we can evaluate a function. Let's evaluate this function at 2. So we're finding f of 2 by substituting 2 in for x wherever we find it on the right-hand side and then we'll simplify on the right hand side to find out that f of 2 is equal to negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So we've found another point on this line 2, negative 3. When x is 2, y is negative 3. And you can see that that point is graphed 2, negative 3 right here. Okay, let's try it again. This time let's let x equal negative 2. So we're finding f of negative 2 so in our function on the right hand side, we'll substitute negative 2 in for x and solve for y. It's going to be 2 minus 1 or, or 1. So we find out that f of negative 2 is equal to 1. And another point on this function is negative 2, positive 1. And you can see that that would be graphed also, negative 2, positive 1 right here. Include in your notes of this video guided practice problems 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6 found on pages 73 and 75 of your textbook.